It's 27th of December 2009. People are basking in the afterglow of Christmas, getting ready to celebrate the start of a new decade and overall filled with merriment and wonder. That is, of course, until several posts are made to various fansite forums warning of an upcoming threat. The new year will not be a time of joy, it will be a time of terror. Because as the clock strikes midnight, RuneScape will fall victim of a fate the likes of which have never been seen before. As the clock strikes 12, 750,000 accounts will be hijacked simultaneously. This was far from an empty threat. This declaration of war was being attributed to the legendary hijacker Marsh Viper X, whose name was also attached to several high-profile incidents in the past. Marsh Viper had hijacked the Old Knight, one of RuneScape's most famous players, and had also discovered the first Blood Rune duplication glitch. Even beyond RuneScape, he was known in the wider gaming community for being behind the StarCraft Surge and the Warhammer Highscore hack. If it was just some random anonymous threat, very few people would have taken it seriously. But this was someone who could actually do it. It couldn't be true. Could it? Well, apparently, Marsh Viper had found an exploit in the Java login script used by Jagex that gave him access to any account he wanted. After coding up a dirty little script to do all the heavy lifting for him, he was a button press away from taking control of 750,000 accounts belonging to some of RuneScape's most ardent players. Why? Well, it wasn't for money or fame. Uh, actually, I lied, <laughs> this was for fame, because he was looking to set the Guinness World Record for the largest online game hijacking in history. Although, being able to empty the banks of so many random accounts would certainly be a nice side effect. Adding to the menacing nature of the proclamation, a list of names were attached to the threat. A way for players to check if they were at risk of being compromised and potentially to try and prepare for the inevitable, although there wasn't exactly anything they could do to stop him. The list was made entirely because Marsh knew there was no way to stop him. And to further back up the claims, sources for the threats were shared, linking to hijacking and black market forums that had discussed the specifics in advance. One of these forums even hosted the members of what would later become the notorious bug abusing group Hacks Unit, in case you needed further credentials. This wasn't just some random kid going, oh megalol, I will hax you all on New Year's, source, trust me bro. <laughs> This was a coordinated effort. This could very well be real. So naturally, the community loses it over the posts, and the list of names start to spread like wildfire. Now, in the pre-2010s, publicly sharing a list of 750,000 names was a lot harder than it is today. So the list was hosted on RapidShare, a popular file-sharing site which had fairly limited download potential unless you paid for an account. This meant that players started to make their own copies to host and share, because no kid had a Rapid Share premium account back in 2009. Which was fine for a bit, but then some people decided to get a head start on the action by attaching viruses to the copies of the file, and started hijacking people before New Year's Eve thanks to so many people getting swept up in the commotion. Now that people couldn't trust the copies, everyone went back to trying to use the original download, while the unfortunate few with tainted copies now started pleading to Jagex for their accounts back. The forums are aflutter with posts about the threats, and posts about the tainted copies. Regardless of whether Marsh's original threat was legitimate or not, the hijackings are now very real. Hey. Have you heard about that giant list of upcoming hijackings? Pretty scary stuff, huh? Oh, I'm not too worried about that. How come? Because I protect myself with NordVPN, of course. Nord oh, NordVPN! Isn't that the big VPN provider that everyone knows and loves, which also offers other services such as a reliable password manager and fast cloud-based storage? The one that helps protect you from DDoS attacks and malware-ridden sites that could get in the way of your non-stop gaming grinds? Yeah, it's the one with the top-of-the-range threat protection that blocks intrusive ads and trackers and scans all the files you download to make sure they're safe. The one that is currently offering a special deal as part of their cybersecurity awareness campaign, where you can get a bonus four months on top of any and all plans and products. Ranging from just their VPN service to the VPN, NordPass, and NordLocker? Yup, and you can get your exclusive NordVPN deal at nordvpn.com slash rswill, which is risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. NordVPN.com slash rswill? The very same. Yeah, thought so. 
Well, at least the chat here is better than the Lumbridge Marketplace. Jagex can only stay silent for so long. Just past midnight on 29th of December, community manager Maud French chimes in on one of the many posts that have overtaken the forums as of late. He asks for everyone to settle down, to minimize the posts on the forums, as excessive discussion of supposed bug abuse would just encourage other offenders. However, he was not going to dismiss their concerns as meaningless and was raising the issue to be investigated by the Jagex ICU team, who specializes in exactly this sort of thing. Fansite forums aren't convinced. This is a cover-up. I bet he said that just to keep us quiet and he's not going to do anything. Well, that very afternoon, community manager Maud John H made a separate post saying that, well, it's not going to happen. The systems are safe and they can't be compromised. There's no exploit here, it's just someone trying to scare others. But being vigilant about account safety is never a bad thing, so he does encourage everyone to take steps to keep themselves safe regardless. But by the time the players receive this response, many others have already uploaded videos warning everyone else about the upcoming doom, and the fear-mongering continues to spread. While many have bought it completely, there are still plenty of others who are non-believers. In the chat of one such uploaded video, you can see a player discussing how it's clearly the list itself that is compromised, so only the people who downloaded it will be hijacked. However, on 30th of December, Marsh publishes his own statement, directed squarely at those believing him to be a fake. He claims that Jagex have made contact with him over the past few days to try and scare him off, but he won't back down. He also said that, unfortunately, Jagex did throw a massive wrench in his plans by contacting Guinness of all people, telling them to call the record attempt off. And as one last thing to remove any doubts of his legitimacy, he includes a list of all the proxies he is intending to use to pull off the mass hijacking, with a large list of scripts which will automate the whole process for him. The RuneScape forums are left with the forum moderator team, who continue to echo Jagex's public comments about the matter. You have nothing to worry about, there's no exploit, your accounts will be fine if you secure them, etc, etc. Not particularly reassuring to those who are panicking about it, but it's the best they can do. With no more comments from Jagex or Marsh, time ticks down towards the fateful moment. Some are non-believers, who see the whole thing as ridiculous. Some are invested beyond a reasonable doubt who are sure it's going to happen. But there are plenty of people stuck in the middle who are skeptical of the whole thing. But what if it is real? As the clock approaches midnight on New Year's Eve and the world gets ready to bid farewell to 2009 and beckon in the 2010s, many players find themselves sitting by their computers, hoping that keeping their accounts logged in will save them from Marsh Viper X. With hearts of all shapes and sizes truly hoping for the best, crunch time finally arrives as the final seconds tick away to midnight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. It's 27th of December 2009. People are basking in the afterglow of Christmas, getting ready to celebrate the start of a new decade, and overall filled with merriment and wonder. That is, of course, still true for our fellow scapers down under, in the far-off land of Australia. However, Orc Legend, a member of the PK and clan DI, the same DI that Falador Massacre co-star Cursed You belonged to, is bored. And you know what would be fun? Causing chaos in the community. Fueled entirely by the motive of, because it'd be funny, Orc Legend tracks down a list of several hundred thousand names from a black market website. It's not particularly hard to find. Plenty of so-called cracker lists exist, which are long lists of names of accounts that people might want to use password crackers or other devious techniques on. He then takes the name Marsh Viper X from a copypasta shared on 4chan, making up a quick story about his notoriety before posting a link to several fan sites to this quick list he found. Obviously, he expects nothing of it. Even a cursory background check on his story will show that it's nonsense, but a couple people will believe it, which is funny enough, so he and his DI friends have a good giggle at the players believing it's legit. But the problem is, word starts to spread like a game of telephone, and suddenly what was easy to fact check as false becomes assumed public knowledge. Oh, of course I've heard of Marsh Viper X. Haven't you? And so the quickly thought up hoax becomes mistaken as a credible threat. That's hilarious. But you know what else it is? An opportunity. 
If you weren't on the internet in the mid-2000s, I can't stress how much of a pain it was to upload and download stuff publicly. You usually had to resort to sites like RapidShare, which put heavy restrictions on downloading stuff to cover their maintenance cost. You'd download a few megabytes, then have to wait several hours to continue downloading the file, or pay for a premium account to keep going. But if you don't want to give your or your mother's bank details to a shady site to download stuff, you could get some credit if you uploaded stuff that other people downloaded. Brings more people and hence people to look at the ads to the site, right? Well, as the visitor site to the DI forum searched, and they saw how many people were interested in this list, Ork and two other members quickly switched out the original link for one that awarded them rapid share points. While they weren't able to monetize the majority of downloads that had been lost to the old copy-pasted link, they still managed to secure 2,000 unique downloads with their new one. And so, as everyone said goodbye to the 2000s and beckoned in the 2010s with a 3, 2, 1. The forum reaction was weird. With many still expecting an unprecedented mass hijacking, some players start reporting in as survivors, stating their accounts had been untouched. However, it didn't take long for Orc Legend to show up and pull back the curtain, explaining the hoax and sharing images of community reactions with a post signed Marsh Viper X. Some analytics were also provided, showing just how intense the numbers of searches about the event had been. The original post was also thoroughly debunked. The sources Orc had provided never hosted the threats he said they did. Quint, one of the Hacks Unit members frequenting one such source site, couldn't recall the alleged hijacking that Marsh had boasted about. Marsh Viper X was an entirely fake persona. The old knight had been recovered by someone else entirely. The Blood Rune dupe was found by the bug abuse group The Tainted Ones, not some mysterious individual. The 2002 StarCraft Surge and Warhammer Highscore hack if you haven't heard of those, don't worry, because neither had anyone else. No Google results. Completely made up. He hadn't even subscribed to the Will Miss It channel to be notified for future uploads. A fraud through and through. And obviously, the logistics of hijacking 750,000 accounts at once just don't work. If you were confused about how such a thing could work, good, because it really wouldn't. Assuming that running scripts to take 750,000 accounts at once wouldn't just explode the hijackers' computers, it would put a huge strain on Jagex's servers. The same Jagex who could just roll back an incident of this size and scale if need be. So, as everyone entered 2010, with the New Year's hijacking known to be just a hoax, players go about their daily business with their accounts as secure as always. Elated with the results, the DR forums list Orc's thread in their Legendary Threads folder, while Orc gets away scot-free, all thanks to the ceaseless gullibility of the RuneScape community. Thank you so much for watching. These are the small sort of events I really like bringing attention to, because if you don't preserve them, we'll all just forget about them. And some things are just too funny to lose. That's all for now, my name is Will Miss It, and I'll see you all later.